All right, welcome to Math 7, Lesson 5 from our first unit, looking at the size of the scale factor today. So we could just continue our studying, looking at scale factors and how different shapes uh, correspond to one another. And so you began, first of all, with just doing some mental math here with some different numbers. And the idea with the mental math was to recognize that this value of x, which could be any one of these values here, could be a whole number or it could be a fraction, and that both fractions and whole numbers can work to use some mental math to solve some problems. So for example, in the first one, perhaps you looked and said, well, I know 16 times 10 can give me the 160, right? That's pretty close if I multiply by 10, but I'm not quite there and 160, that's only about 16 away from 176. So you might say, mm, I'm gonna go with 11. So you can just do some mental math to figure these things out. So when you got to 16, it's not a whole number. Now suddenly it's 16 times something is gonna give you eight. Well, I know eight is half of 16, which was to tell me that 16 times a half would give me eight. And again, the idea with this little warm-up activity was just to recognize I can use both whole numbers and fractions in order to solve for X or to figure out what might be missing there. In this case, we're gonna be using these whole numbers and fractions to become our scale factors as we go throughout this unit. In the next part of your lesson today, your teacher gave you some cards to look at and they had a kind of a card sort and you had to look at them and figure out what was happening with the different cards and different patterns that you were given. So perhaps you had a set like this. So here's four different cards here. And what you might notice going from one to the other, from A to B, is that we're definitely increasing in size, right? Things are getting larger from A to B, it's growing. And what we can notice here is that I have, this one has a, a, a height of two, but over here I have a height of one, two, three, four. So to go from two to four means I'm increasing times two. But is that happening here? One, two, three? Well, if we're expecting it to be the same, we would say three times two is six. Let's check up here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So indeed, we could actually look at this, uh, these two shapes, A to B, and say that it has a scale factor of times two, because that's what's happening from one shape to the next. You could do similar things with shapes like these. These are a little bit different because now you're working with diagonal lines and things like that. But we notice that this one is going from a larger shape to a smaller shape. So it is decreasing. And so in this case, I have one, two, three, four. Perhaps there's a link right here, I have four. And we're gonna to go to two. So I have to think about my warm-up activity. Four times some number is gonna get me down to two. Again, we said before in our warm-up, that because I'm gonna be decreasing, I'm probably gonna look for a fraction. So four times some number is gonna give me the two. In this case, I might know math facts and say, well, two is half of four. So if I multiply by four, sorry, multiply four by a half, I end up with two. So my scale factor here is gonna be just a half. And that works out pretty well. And you do the same thing for things like the circle. Again, you have a two and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So because I'm going from two to six, I'm gonna say, what's my scale factor gonna be? What am I multiplying to go from two to six? In this case, you might have been said, oh, my scale factor is three. You also have some cards that look a little interesting as well. And just, you know, let's just throw, pull out a couple, because perhaps like in number two, it said to examine cards 10 and 13 a little more closely. Again, this is just a review. So here's 10 and 13. What we see in 10 and 13 is we essentially have the same shapes, except in this one, we're going from small to large, and here we're going from large to small. They're almost identical. Um, in fact, if we count up the, the length here, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six units high. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six units high. So they're identical shapes, just going from a, a different order. This one goes from six up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I asked myself for scale factor, for scale factor. Well, I'm going from a six times some number all the way up to 18. So what's it gonna take to go from six to 18? Again, thinking about math facts, we're gonna say that's probably a three. Or you might be able to think about what we did before when on one of our previous lessons, we talked about using our new shape divided by our original shape to find out what a scale factor is gonna be. In our new shape, we had an 18, and the original was a six. 18 divided by six is also three. So we end up with a scale factor of three. Well, that's exciting. 
But over here, I have a height of 12, and sorry, a height of 18, and a height of 6. So I'm going from 18 times some number to 6. Well, okay, same idea here. If my new one is 6, so new over original is 6, and my original is 18, now I reduce 6 and 18 becomes 1 third. So the scale factor here equals 1 third. And what you want to notice is when the shape's the same like this, I can see something kind of cool. My scale factor here when I'm increasing with the same shape is 3. But over here when I'm decreasing, my scale factor is 1 third. So depending upon which way I'm going, whether I am increasing, as in the case here, or decreasing here, I end up with scale factors that can become the reciprocal of one another, because three is the same as three over one. And so when I'm going to be, if I wanna go the other direction, if I wanna scale this back down and go the other way, I would use the reciprocal to go in the opposite direction, to go from large to small, or small to large. Kinda cool. The other thing you looked at there was in the number three, they had ones that were like this. They said, well, take a look at these. These are all gonna be the same. Yep, we had lengths of two, lengths of two, they're the same. And so when there's no change, when you go from two times a number to equal two, we would say, hmm, it's one. So our scale factor is simply one. And when you have a scale factor of one, then there's no change in the shape, it stays the same. And that was a key part that you took out of that little practice together with your card sort there. Okay, then we kind of moved on to, are you ready for some more? We looked at some problems about triangles and scaled copies and asked some questions like this. You have triangle B is a scaled copy of triangle A with a scale factor of a half. Now, from what we've already talked about, if the scale factor is greater than one, we tend to what? We tend to increase. If the scale factor is equal to one, it stays the same. And the scale factor is less than one, then we're going to decrease. So in this case here, if I have a triangle A, I'm just gonna make up a size here, and I have a scale factor of a half, then that tells me that the next triangle is gonna be smaller, isn't it? That's how it works, it has a scale factor of a half. So how many times bigger are the sides of length B when compared with, with triangle A? Don't get tripped up by the language here. Even though it uses the word bigger, it's just trying to say what's the difference from B to A. To go from B to A, we're gonna say it's gonna be, <coughs> excuse me, it's gonna be half. So we would say it's gonna be half as large here. All right, and that's kind of the idea of what you were doing. Again, this is part of what you did in class, day, uh, class today. All right, make sure you're in the right spot here, good. Imagine you have B, a scale by a factor of a half, and you take the B one, so we go from here to here, scale factor of a half, and it says, oh, let's do it again. Let's make another triangle even smaller and scale it by a half. If we do that a second time, now I have a scale factor of a half times another scale factor of half, which is gonna be one fourth. And what's kind of cool is that if this was to continue to going on forever and ever and ever for n number of times, What's happening is I'm taking my half value and I'm essentially multiplying it by itself n times to find out however small it's gonna be as I keep on going forever, all the way to find triangle n. All right, now from there, your teacher gave you a piece of some puzzle pieces and you took those puzzle pieces, it looked something like this, and you're able to take an original and then draw them down to scale and then put them back together with your partners there. I'm not gonna go over that part with you there, but that's what you did. And then you also took some time looking at some shapes. I mean, my shapes didn't quite come out on my graph paper too well, okay? So I'll, I'll pull this one out just to take a look at my, my one book here. It says, what is the fa scale factor from the original triangle to its copy? We can see the original is one, two, three, four, five, and the next one is one. So we're going from five to one in this case here is what I'm reducing by. So I gotta think about five times a number is gonna equal one. What I know about fractions is if I have one over five, then those are gonna redu reduce to one and one equals one. So in this case, it's gonna be there. Now, if I wanted to go this way, I would say it's times five if I'm gonna increase there. And again, reciprocal of five is one over five. 
So a way to think about that there. Number two, the scale factor of the original trapezoid is two. Its copy is two. So my scale factor is two. So when the scale factor is two, then I would take this shape and I would double the size. So if the first size was this much, again, I don't have my little grid lines here. I'm gonna make it double the size, double the size, double the size, double the size. This is just an estimate, okay? But again, part of what you did in your notes before anyways. Over here, this is a great problem that you did, again, review, because we're going scale factor is three over two, the original to its copy. So we're going from this one to here is three over two. Now, three over two is greater than one, isn't it, right? So we're getting larger going this way, which means my original would have been smaller. But because we want to go this direction, I use the reciprocal. The reciprocal is two thirds to go back down this way. So I take a look at my shape here and I have one, two, three, I think it was one, two, yep, one, two, three, uh, kind of cubes long, one, two, three. So if it's three and three, if I want to draw it over here, I would multiply three times two thirds to find out what my new length would be. That's going to cancel and left with two. So I would draw, would draw a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and these are all one, two, three, so one, two, and then one, two, to make my new shape something along those lines there. And for number four, finally, these ones look exactly the same, and so our scale factor, because they are the same, one, two, one, two, all the way across, our scale factor would end up being just one, okay? And then finally, number five, the scale factor of the original figure to its scale is three, draw a scaled copy. Same idea, you take the shape of the four, and we're going to basically multiply each side length by four. So if this one happened to be that long, we're going to multiply it by, oh, sorry, not four, by three. Sorry about that. I just saw the four by three. So to summarize the lesson before we get into homework real quick, we said here in today's lesson that the size of the scale factor affects the size of the copy. When the scale factor is less than one, we're going to be decreasing in the copy. When the scale factor is greater than one, then the copy is increasing. When the scale factor is one, it stays the same. And we showed that here with the model here of a triangle. Going from this triangle, this triangle is increasing by three halves. So it's gonna be getting larger. But the cool part is, is that the scaling can be reversed using the reciprocal scale factors. So if I want to go this way, then I reciproc use reciprocals. Instead of 3 over 2, it becomes 2 over 3, and I get the scaling going the opposite way. And that's going to be a key concept moving forward. So keep that in mind. If you have to go the other way, you just use the reciprocal. So on today's homework assignment, we have some scale factors here, some questions about scale factors. And just wants to know, to, for each pair, decide if the scale factor from one to the other is greater than 1, equal to 1, or less than 1. So we have greater than one, we have equal to one, and we have less than one. So from P to Q, because we're increasing in size, we would say that it is greater than one. From P to R, in this case here, it's still increasing in size, so it's still greater than one. From Q to S, in this case, we're getting smaller, so we would say it's less than one. From Q to R, those are also getting smaller, less than one. S to P, those look about the same, don't they? So because of the same, well, we're gonna say it's equal to one. From R to P, going this way, we're getting smaller, less than one. And from P to S, same one again, is still equal to one. Number two, it says triangle S and triangle L are scaled copies of one another. What is the scale factor from S to L? Well, let's take a look. I have a base here of two, I have a base here of one, two, three, four. So the question is to go from two to four, I need to figure out what that scale factor is going to be. So two times an unknown number is gonna give me to four. Hopefully we know that our scale factor here is gonna be two because two times two is four. Now it asks what's the scale factor from L to S? So going this direction. Again, remember we said before, if two is a scale factor going one way, then the other way is gonna be the reciprocal. So instead of two over one, we flip it and we have one over two, or simply a half is how that works out. For C, triangle M is also a scale copy of S. A scale factor of S to M is three over two. 
what is the scale factor of m to s? So if s to m equals 3 over 2, and we're going to go the other way, then again, we use the reciprocal. And that becomes our solution for number 2c. Looking on the back side, we just have some questions here to think about. A lot of these questions here do want you to explain. So be sure, even though I'm talking about them, you write down your explanation for why you have the answer you do. So it says, are two squares of the same side length scaled copies of one another? So if I have one that is, there's my square, one, 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 and another one is one, 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 are they scaled copies of each other? Well, if they have the same length and the same angles, then we would say, yep, they are. But make sure in your answer you say why. It has to deal with having the same length measurements all the way around and the same angle measurements all the way around. It's important to, to include your reasoning in your answer. I can guarantee if you just have yes as an answer, your teacher will probably not give you credit for that. So be careful on that one there. Okay? Four, number four. The quadrilateral A has side lengths 2, 3, 5, and 6. I'm going to write it this way. 2, 3, 5, and 6. And quadrilateral B has lengths 4, 5, 8, and 10. Could one of the quadrilaterals be a scaled copy of the other? Again, explain. Well, let's think about it this way. If I was to use this and think of a scale factor, to go from 4 to 2 to 4, I'm going to multiply by 2. If it's a scaled copy, then I'm going to multiply everything by the same scaled factor. And all I have to do is take a look and see that, hmm, 3 times 2, that does not equal 5. That equals 6. Wrong. 5 times 2 equals 10, not 8. Wrong. 6 times 2 is 12. Wrong. This tells me, no, there is not a scale factor. These are not, um, uh, these are not scaled copies of each other. So we're going to say not a scaled copy. And finally, number five, looking at the ratios here, we have a ratio of 12 to 3. You could think of 12 to 3 as a fraction like this if you wanted to, if you want to write it up and down. You could, from there, we can decide what it's going to be, is this going to be equivalent or not. So 12 to 3, think of it this way. With A, does 12 to 3, does that line up well with, with 6 to 1? To go from 12 to 6, that is going to be done by doing divided by 2. And to go from 3 to 1, that's divided by 3. Doesn't match, we would say nope. When I look at the next one, 12 thirds and 1 fourth. Are those going to work? To go from 12 to 1 is divided by 12. Is 3 divided by 12, 4? Nope, not going to work. I'm going to go ahead and erase this just so you don't think I'm circling that one there real quick. All right. For 4 to 1, we have 12 over 3 and we have 4 over 1. To go from 12 to, 3, 12 to 4, this happens by dividing by 3. When I divide 3 by 3, do I get 1? Yes, I do. So that would be a great answer. For the next one, we have 12 over 3, and we have 24 over 6. To go from 12 to 24, that's done by multiplying by 2. Well, what is 3 times 2? It's also 6, and because that works, the same scale factor, we would say, yep, it works. So this scale factor is times 3. Uh, actually, it's not times 3. It's divided by 3, so it's times 1 third. This one's times 2. 15? Mm, I don't think so. 12 over 3, 15 over 6. This is divided by 2 to go, or times 2 to get there. Times 2? Nah, doesn't work. We'd say no. And finally over here, we have 12 over 3, and we have 1,200 and 300. If you look here, all we're really doing is adding two sets of zeros, right? So we're multiplying by 100 on the top and the bottom for F to work. And 12 won't work as well. Hope that helps you a little bit your lesson today. Good luck on, on your work and in class.